next on The Professional Rule Breaker. So welcome back to the Professional Rule Breaker podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Walterhouse. And today I have a really big treat for people that might be interested in a side hustle or figuring out a way maybe to make more money because I have with me the king of the side hustle who has taken his business into a multi-million dollar side hustle. So I want to welcome my friend, Christian Henneke. Thanks for having me, Kathy. Fun to of be course. here. <laughs> I'm happy to have you here. We talked about it um, for a bit, so I'm glad that we're able to do this. And um, I just want to kind of start off just right from the get-go. I want you to tell people how on earth did you go from whatever it was that you were doing before mm -hmm. to thinking that a side hustle is maybe something that you could do, and then it kind of exploded on you. Yeah. Well, I've done a lot of things um, over the years. I'm 46 years old. I'm married. I've got two teenage boys. And uh, for anybody that's known me a long time, they know that I'm really, really amazing at failing. I'm, I've <laughs> got that really figured out. <laughs> well, you know what? I think that's a sign of an entrepreneur, though, because like if you can't fail and sure. pick yourself up, then what? Yeah. I I guess if you're afraid to take a chance, then, you know, you're just wired differently. And I'm definitely, historically, I haven't been afraid to take a chance where it caught up with me. Ultimately, I spent the first, uh, my wife and I've been married 25 years, and I spent the first 15 or so years kind of wildly swinging. I was, you know, 19 years old and invincible in my mind for the first 15 years or so of our marriage, my poor wife. <laughs> Um, she's and I put tried. up with a lot then, right? <laughs> oh, she has. Oh, she has. Yeah. She should have dumped me a long time ago. I wasn't thinking a lot of the time. So I don't know. I think I can lump my first 15 years in just a, a, a few seconds here because the main lesson to learn <clears throat> is if you're something of a blunt instrument like me, I don't have a big brain. You aim me in the, a direction and I won't stop. You know, my, my superpower is not stopping. <laughs> okay. You're resilient and you're like, you just go. Yeah. Yeah. But for the first 15 years, I, I did a bunch of really dumb stuff. What it did to me though, um, coming out of those rough years, uh, I had, I think I gained really, really significant clarity on what I value. I wasn't clear. And part of my challenge, I think, in my first 15 years of entrepreneurship was I, I wasn't clear internally on what I value. So getting beat up for 15 years brought me to the point where I valued things like time. I, I became hyper aware. I started to become hyper aware. Like, you know, for example, three days into a new month, I look at the calendar and I'm consciously telling myself, we are 10%, like the, the month is 10% gone. What is the highest and best use of my time for the next hour? And I, I started to, to create this, you know, this, this thought pattern or something in my head that would help me to focus on high value, you know, impactful things. Um, but in terms of what I value and what I got clarity on, um, simplicity, that's huge for me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not not <laughs> you know, not simple. an extra size. Yeah, I wasn't blessed with a giant brain. Uh, yeah, you when I think... stop saying that because I don't think that's true. <laughs> I don't think that's well, true because the first thing that you just said is, you know, you you literally you set up a habit to win by that thing when you're valuing time, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. that's a really great habit. Okay, so maybe there are some smart little things here and there, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, so I value flexibility. My dad was active duty Air Force 26 years. So my whole growing up, I had lots of gypsy blood. Um, I have a majority of gypsy blood in me to this day. So flexibility, mobility. Um, and then there are other things that work into this. I realized along the way, 
um, I, I really detest asking permission. I mm. hate that. I do not want to be in a position where I'm subservient to, you know, somebody that kind of looms over me in the background all the time, telling me what I can or can't do or when I can do it or how I can do it. And little things used to drive me nuts. Um, I had a job one time. Um, I was a plumber originally. Uh, and if you go way back, there was something that drove me nuts and it, and it really pushed me so into entrepreneurial <laughs> pursuits. I hate, I hate using public bathrooms. Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And I used to be, I don't have any weird problem or anything like that. I just, well, I have a, have a head. It wasn't I where a head I, what I thought you were going to say at all. <laughs> it's, it's a head problem. It's a head problem I have, but I'm kind of a germaphobe. So the idea of spending decades of my life, you know, the majority of the hours in a week going to work and sweating and bleeding and, and plumbing, I would break fingers and it felt, you know, I really did enjoy Thanks, mom and dad, you know, for raising me this way to value, um, you know, a job done all the way and all that stuff. It felt good to sweat and bleed on one hand. But on the other hand, when I'm out on a job site or something, I have to use these bathrooms and it was, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. So it was very motivating. <laughs> oh my gosh. I actually know somebody else that will not go to the bathroom if it's like a public uh -huh. bathroom. So you're not alone. <laughs> I'm not going to spill the beans on who that is. It's not me. Um, but I do know someone, I do know someone else, but that's really interesting. But you know, it's interesting that you said one of the things that you hate is asking permission because mm -hmm. I think that's almost the mantra for today because I did several other um, podcast recording today. And I think every single person said that about hating mm. to ask permission. So I think that is really, that is something that's really common in entrepreneurs, um, mm -hmm. that almost being the little man, not wanting to be the little man and raise your hand and go, Hey, you know, Mr. Or Mrs. Whomever, can right. I do this instead of just yeah. going with your gut and just doing what you needed to do? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, um, and, and I've, I've talked with other entrepreneurs. Um, I'm thinking of a good friend right now who has a really bad attitude around this. He's like constantly rebellious. It wasn't that for me. It was this more subtle awareness that if I'm not really careful in my decision-making, I felt like I, I might end up just kind of sleepwalking through life, kind of bumping along, going with the flow and not that that's wrong or anything. I just, I, I, um, I longed for something different and I wasn't even looking to conquer the world necessarily. I just, I wanted to be able to be okay and not have to ask permission my whole life. You know, I wanted both of those at the same time. At the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey there, you know, I'm all about making a big difference, making this really big impact. So I am so thrilled to introduce to you today's podcast sponsor. They are the very last U.S. family owned manufacturer of consumer goods products, products that you use every single day and you run out of them every single day. And on top of that, their products are healthier and safer for you. And they have been made here in the great USA. My family made the switch and I am so happy that we did. And so is everyone else in the family because the products are amazing. So while these big giant corporations are just getting bigger and so many small businesses are really struggling to survive, why not help me in rooting for the underdog? And you know, I'm all about the underdog instead of these giant 11 conglomerates that control 97% of the North American consumer goods market. So if you're ready to make a difference and switch away to something bigger and better, go to switchaway.com forward slash rule breaker, drop your information and one of my friends will reach out to you directly and let's all switch away together to better quality products that are healthier and safer for you and support 
family owned businesses because together we can rewrite the business landscape and make a difference one person at a time. So did you, in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that you would go from where you were at that point, maybe working that job, right? To Mm -hmm. where you are today, where you have, right? The flexibility, the time. You definitely don't need to ask anybody permission. Right, (laughs) yeah. No, not really. I, I can't say that I seriously ever did. When I was really young, I think I did what probably a lot of especially young men might do. You know, I was thinking about the the fast cars and the bright colored supercars and stuff and ridiculous stuff. I do have an appreciation for ridiculous supercars. Um, if you'd asked me 20 years ago about it, I would have told you that I need one. Um, I don't require one anymore. I do appreciate them. <laughs> but what I desire, oh, and there's another thing that I got clarity on. One of the th- one of my, one of the things I value most is adventure with people that I love. Uh, it's the simple things a lot of the time, you know, but deliberately choosing to make memories and and some really cool stuff uh, with people that I love became really, really high on my radar. That really drove me. Uh, but no, I I never seriously imagined that things would progress, that I would be able to, that I'd be able to do it. I didn't, I didn't, I believe in myself to some degree, <laughs> like to probably maybe slightly higher than normal. <laughs> not definitely not to the degree to where things have, have gone at this point. No. Wow. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you kind of believe in yourself um, because you've built this crazy business. You I've came up with asset. the idea, correct? Yeah, a, a with few a group friends of folks. And I, yeah, a few friends and I, um, we saw a gap in a pretty significant marketplace. And I wish I could say, honestly, that we were musing, you know, stroking our beards and <laughs> looking at the market. It wasn't like that. It was an accident, frankly. Um, but once we once we did all the work, we had this raw idea, we executed on the idea. And over the next few months, we, we didn't really think, at least I didn't think much about some big strategy or anything like that. I went through this and came out the other side going, huh, we could do that again on purpose (laughs) that thing that we just did we could do that again we could kind of systematize and and build processes to support this and that's what the last three years um, has been about and now a lot of my friends have been able to build an asset um, really out of thin air Um, my friends and I we do not require you know capital or or risk like as often necessary in these entrepreneurial pursuits. Um, It's been really interesting. So the whole, you know, I've really come to this point where I I look around and go, man, the the things I value significantly simplicity, because I really don't like complicated. It, it, it makes me tired. I think it makes makes me tired too. (laughs) (laughs) When it get when it gets, uh, when things get complicated, I kind of just don't want to do it. That's how I am. I like things simple. Yes. I I feel like I can if I have to, but I hope I don't have to for very long because after a while I just get worn out. Um, Maybe my work ethic isn't what it used to be. I don't know. Uh, Anyway, yes, I'm I'm waking up these days feeling a lot of gratitude around where things have gone and how things have progressed. My friends and I have been able to help a lot of other people kind of come down the same sort of path. It's been a really interesting thing. There's this other, there's this other part of it where for many years, for most of my adult life, it was kind of me, uh, like me against the world is how, how it felt a lot of the time. I might've had a foxhole buddy or two and that, you know, lifesaver for me over the years, but I didn't have for so long, I did not have a really deep Um, two things, I guess I could use to describe this, a really significant peace of mind. It could be like financially, because my house, 
you know, my financial house was burning down around me for so long. <laughs> I grew to Which really appreciate, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the idea of just being okay. Oh, wow. This is, this feels amazing. So this deep peace of mind, and then also this deep, a really significant sense of belonging and doing something honorable. Mm -hmm. And I have kids. I, I think probably anybody who has kids, you kind of get to a point in life where maybe it, it dawns on you at some point, my kids might Google me someday, you know, <laughs> what are they going to find? You want to make sure that when they Google you, they're going to be like, oh, that's really cool. You know, my uh -huh. mom, my yes. dad did this rather than, oh my gosh. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm hitting on a bunch of different things there, but I have, I have thankfully been able to get to a point where I just feel really good deep down, waking up, doing my work. I have endless gas in the tank for that. Um, I, that feels good. Like that, that isn't normal for me. I have had so many opportunities in the past where I did it because I had to, not because I wanted to, or I did it because I felt like I, I guess I felt like I had to, but I haven't had that feeling in years. Yeah. Interesting. So interesting. So um, what do you say to the people that feel trapped in their situation? Because probably if I had to guess, when you had that job at one time, you probably felt trapped or maybe you felt like oh, yeah. you had lack of security or um, uncertainty maybe for the future. Yeah. Um, I'd come back to time. I, I would, my advice for myself, if I could give my old self advice is redeem the time. Like right now, not someday, not tomorrow, redeem the time. What is the highest and best use of my next hour? Uh, and I, and then I think there's, there's a lot of value in masterminding, um, seeking mentoring, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I regret not having done that much, much sooner than I finally did. Frankly, that the path I'm on now, the life that my family and I get to have now is largely, um, maybe not largely as a result, but there were some connections and mentoring along the way that helped me open my eyes to some different things, to a different way to do life and to, and to do work and to do business. And it has fundamentally changed um, my day-to-day -day life and, and that of my family. So mentoring, um, if you feel stuck, um, get some guidance, get some direction. And if it doesn't feel quite right, maybe keep, keep looking for that and also redeem the time like now, not later. Yeah. Cause guess what? What's going to happen is you're going to run out of time. Eventually you're going to yeah. hit the end of your life and you're going to be like, I should have, could have, would have. Um, yeah. And I do love that you talked about mentoring because I know for me, I've been really lucky in which I've been able to find some amazing mentors because I think that is the fastest path to success. You just mm -hmm. see what other people are doing yep. because they're successful for a reason, right? And then you just replicate yeah. it as much as you can. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. I, that's, so that's basically basically what I've done. Can you give us a little bit of a peek into what it is that you do, Christian? Because I know people out there are listening are like, okay, he's got this high, side hustle. He's doing really well. What on earth is this man doing? <laughs> it's like a, a little synopsis. Sure. Um, I, do, I do customer acquisition for a, a large uh, but family-owned consumer goods manufacturer. Uh, their competition are outfits like Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Colgate, Palmolive, Unilever, Merck, Pfizer, those guys. Um, <laughs> I realize I got to be really careful what I say here because the I am so inclined, you know, like here I come competition <laughs> coming for your customers. I've got so many See, various there's enough customers for everybody. Oh, there's plenty. There yes. are, there are plenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The fact, the fact is my friends and I last few years, we've had a significant amount of success. It's changed a lot of lives and my, in my circle of friends. And I bet Procter and Gamble doesn't even, you know, I'm, I'm confident they have no idea I even exist. 
<laughs> so <laughs> I'm not taking, it does feel kind of good to be able to um, do, do work that I feel is important and meaningful and honorable, make a great, um, you know, build a great asset, build a great cash flow, my friends and I, without hurting anybody. You know, we're not taking food out of anybody's mouth. So right. that feels good. <laughs> no. And it sounds like you're helping a bunch of people at the same time too. Yeah. Yeah. That has Which... been, um, that has been really gratifying. We had this, um, so if it's so funny that you and I are talking here today and, um, you're the rule breaker that you are, um, <laughs> a few years ago, uh, in my small circle of friends that has grown, uh, in recent years, I, I suggested, and this really was brought on by the, all the, the COVID stuff in the last few years. I had this realization where my friends and I are, we're nobodies. We're like, we're little guys, you know, in, in the, in the broader s scheme of it's, things. It's None that of us... feeling of not being able to make a difference, right? Is that. Yes. Yeah. It, it It's that. And um, I, I just am pretty aware that I'm not a political elite, politically elite person. I'm not one of these, you know, pulling the strings, controlling the world kind of people. And so I generally sort the world into two camps. You're either, one of the elites or you're a little guy. <laughs> no, it's an oversimplification, but I like, I like picturing it that way. And in that context, I told my friends, um, what are the rules for little guys? And this is what makes me think of you and your podcast and, and the work you've been doing. Um, what are the rules for little guys? And I, and I, what came out of my mouth next was, I think what, I think the rules, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to get in line we're supposed to stay in line. We're supposed to shut up. And then eventually, maybe while, maybe while we're literally at work, we're supposed to die in line. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about it, it, I, I it, hate that. Hey, I don't even like being in line, <laughs> period. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. It, it pulls on this us versus them um, you know, narrative, the storyline that's so moving for most human beings. I didn't realize it at the time, but we started telling that to each other, you know, let's, let's wake up and break some rules today. Um, so it brings me great joy to be on here with, uh, with, with the rule the breaker. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, I always ask people what makes you a rule breaker. I think you were probably a rule breaker. The minute you came out of your mother's womb, <laughs> you probably were the biggest hellion. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I just kind of think, <laughs> Yeah, might have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had I had my moments. If my mom were here, I, she would she would have stories. Yeah, I, I got out of line early in life. Um, I did have a job one time. Um, I learned a lot on the job. Um, still friends with my old boss, um, but one job was enough. I knew I was not willing to get in that line and stay in that line. <laughs> I'm gonna go do my own thing. <laughs> Yeah, I can, uh, I could certainly appreciate that. And maybe that's why you and I get along because neither one of us like to stay in line. And I don't know about you. I know you know this about me. I don't like being told no. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly not asking for permission that, oh, yeah. right, right. The more often I can avoid asking permission in the first place, I just don't hear that dreaded word. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's, uh, wake up, wake up, do this... whatever, do whatever you want. Yeah, that's right. There's a saying in sales is um, you just ask for, for permission later. Or you ask for forgiveness, actually, is right. what it is yes. later. You just go and you just do it. And then yep. somehow, if it's not completely right, you know, in within the guidelines, I would say, you ask for forgiveness later. Most of the time, unless you did something really awful, you're going to get forgiven. So... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bureaucracy in our world. And... Uh... I, th I think that not asking permission, ask for forgiveness later, uh, makes a lot of sense for, for people wired like, like us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm so glad I was able to have you on my podcast. I know there's going to be a lot of people asking questions like, okay, where can I find out more information about what on earth Christian is doing? So we will have that in the show notes if you want to find out further information and like what christian said is what do you value in your life that's a really good question to ask um in really almost a self-reflection what do you value in life 
do you value making a difference in the world? Do you value the time that you have to spend with the people that you love? Because remember, we're only on this life, you know, for a very short ride. So yep. take your gifts that you have. It's like a stone. You throw it in into a stream, create a ripple and make a big difference in the world. And of course, along the way, maybe break some rules and have some fun. <laughs> so I want to thank you, my guest, Christian Henneke. And again, everybody look in the show notes if you want more information on the amazing work that Christian is doing. 